Hey, got another fun video for you here. Today, we are taking this very, very old chair that is pretty much, I, I have the other pieces, but it's splitting, it's rotting away. I've got a few good sections of wood here. This is black cherry wood or dark cherry, however you prefer. There's a few different names for it. But I'm gonna dismantle this leg and I have had a request to make a wand from Pottermore out of this cherry wood. And we're gonna see if we can turn it up a little bit, shape it down some, and make a wand out of it. Now I know some of you are thinking, hey, you did a Star Wars video on how to make a TIE fighter with your lathe, and now, you're making a wand. What's the deal with your channel? You made some corbels the other day. I just make stuff. I'm gonna build a bunch of stuff. I make furniture all the time for my wife, so if you're following the channel because of that, don't be scared. We'll have plenty of those videos. But if you wanna get in on some fun things, I make toys, replica stuff. I'm gonna try to get into making some weapons and things and, and realistic kind of things that I'm into, so. Hang out with me, watch some of these videos, and if you like what you see, make sure you're subscribing and putting the notifications on so you can see me every week, because I'm gonna try to do a video a week. That's, that's the goal. Sometimes I get busy and I can't do it. But got that apart, you saw how easy that just peeled apart there, didn't even need any tools. I'm gonna cut this down, and I think this will be close to the length I need. We might run into a little trouble with this twist, but it might just add, its, add some character too. Okay, safety glasses, earplugs, fingers out of the cutting zone. And let's, uh, let's trim this piece of wood down. Ah, look how dark that is. It's perfect. It smells super good too. Smells just like cherry pie. I'm kidding, not really, but it smells really fragrant. Okay, so I split that front leg a little, so I'm using this back leg, still the cherry wood, and it's got this fun arc in it. I think that's gonna work perfectly into what we're doing with this. I think if I go from this corner to this corner, I can get what I need as far as the length of the wood goes, so we'll trim it down a bit. I have the wood mounted in the lathe. It's pretty tight. I drilled the holes a little bit in the end first because I didn't want the pins to split the wood since it's so hard and it is really old. So I'm going to use my spoke shave to kind of get this more round before I start hitting it with the lathe tool. Kind of using it more like a draw knife right now. I want it to kind of have a gnarled look, so I'm going to leave some of these parts thinner and thicker so it looks like an actual tree branch that grew over time or more like a root wood, something that was gnarled with like a vine twisted around it or something at some point. And we'll see what it looks like once it comes out. But you can see I can got these little knots here. And I'm just leaving them random. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to go as non-uniform as I can. Alright, I got this thing mostly around, not a hundred percent because it was a chair leg and it had a flat side to it, but I'm using my Dremel, I'm kind of giving it some shape, some extra dimension, and I'll do the finishing work down here. The handle on the one I'm trying to uh, make it look like is about right there. It looks like it's got about, this is ten and three quarters inches, and so it looks like it's got about seven, six and a half, seven inches of wand and then you've got your handle down here. So I'll do all the shaping of that with the Dremel. I could carve it, that's real tedious. I'm already not getting enough sleep as it is. So I'm gonna use the power tool and get it done quick. Now, as we all know, 
all wood is not created equal. The reason I picked out this particular chair to make this uh, dark cherry wand out of is because I was scrounging around. I like to get a lot of old furniture and back alleyways and things and there was a bow truckle that had made his home in this old chair and I said aha that's how you know if wood is magical. So of course I grabbed up the chair because I needed to make some wands. Now of course none of that story is true except for the part where I found this chair in an alley but uh, it would be fun if there was really a bow truckle out there. Oh yeah, I changed my bit out. This is just a uh, pointed cutting bit. Switched out the half blade there, it's a little more rounded. Let's see if this one works. Some of the details starting to come in here and you can see it taking shape. I'm going to add a bunch more. I haven't decided what bit in my router I want to use just yet, but I'm taking some creative license. Obviously this isn't exactly like any wand you'll see in the movies or that's described in the book, but I'm taking lots of reference cues from those sources and it should be familiar to a lot of fans. Time to get the tiny little etching bit out. You can barely see. Let me see if I can focus in on it here for you. It's almost like a needle, but it's what I'm gonna use to put the detail in on this. So on this, I'm, I'm gonna put the detail in. I've decided to just, I was gonna do a pattern, but I'm just gonna follow the grain of the wood and see how that naturally comes out looking. Might have to remake the whole thing, might not, might look pretty cool. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So kind of see some of those details starting to come in. I don't know how I'm going to get them to stand out. I might have to go a little deeper. So most of the detail has been carved in. I'm going to sand it and clean that out and we'll see what that looks like when it's all done there. Drill the hole in the bottom of the wand so that I can get my wand core in there. This is the feather of a phoenix, or so I was told. So I'm gonna poke that down in there, and then we'll cap this off and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. The feather is all the way down in. Now we just need to cap that off so you can't ever see there was a hole there. I've collected some glue here. I melted this down from the shavings of a unicorn horn, and I'm going to use these filings from when I was working on the lathe and mix it into the glue. That way I can get a nice black color to go and cap the end of this so you don't know that it was glued. But uh, in all reality, this is Gorilla Glue because that's all I really use. And this is uh, how I'm going to color it. Just packing it down into the hole there, now that it's good and mixed. All right, I'll let that dry for a little while and then I'll go ahead and sand that off. All right, last step. Just got some tongue oil, spelled T-U-N-G, and I'm shining this up. This will dry hard on here, it'll be a sealant and last quite a few years. Every now and then with the oils, it's not like a plastic polyurethane, so it's gonna feed the wood some and keep it nourished so that it's not drying out real bad. Hopefully this will grab some of these details and you'll be able to see them real good. There is the finished product in all its glory. One magical wand. <laughs>